The next generation of AgTech IoT sensors use a number of new connectivity technologies to enable low power, long range connectivity. At Insight, we want to ensure you can benefit from these new on-farm sensor solutions by making sure you have access to on-farm IoT connectivity in a way that doesn't limit future performance. Now, many of you will be familiar with long-range cellular technologies such as 2G, 3G, 4G, and maybe even 5G. And of course, short-range, low-power technologies such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. However, new terms such as LoRaWAN and CAT-M1 MBIoT may be less familiar. This new breed of IoT technologies are designed to connect battery-powered sensor devices over long distances so they can operate in remote areas. So it's important to understand that mobile phone coverage and IoT coverage are not one and the same thing. Often we hear people say, oh, but my coverage is really poor on my property, indicating that they're thinking about mobile phone coverage. There are three main ways sensor devices can get access to IoT networks on your property. The first is IoT network providers. The CAT M1 and MBIoT technologies are being rolled out by telecommunication companies such as Telstra. If you have existing cellular coverage, there's a reasonable chance you'll be able to access these networks already or sometime soon. The LoRaWAN-based networks are being supported by emerging providers such as NNNCO and Meshed. If there is already coverage in your area from one of these providers, your property may be ready to support the operation of IoT sensors. So to check the existing and possibility of future coverage in your area, simply click the link below, which we'll put in the description. Next, let's talk about satellite IoT service. In the same way we have both mobile phones and sat phones for many years, the same is also available for IoT sensors. There are a number of IoT satellite providers, such as Miriota, who provide connectivity options for IoT devices direct to satellite. These services are typically available anywhere where clear view to sky is available. And finally, I want to discuss deploying your own on-farm IoT connectivity. It's likely you might have experienced a mobile black spot you can't do much about. This is one area where IoT networks are very different from being dependent on mobile phone coverage provided by a third-party telecommunications provider. Now, in the same way you can go into Harvey Norman and buy a Wi-Fi router for your home, you can simply set up long-range IoT base stations on your property to bring it online. Now, whilst this might sound complicated, it's possible to unbox an IoT base station and be up and running within five minutes just by plugging it in and putting it on a pole. So to summarize, the goal of these networks are to enable ultra long life battery powered sensors to operate on your farm. Now, before we go too much further, there are three key points that I'd like to make. The first being, don't get caught up trying to select just one IoT network technology for your property. Now, if you think about your mobile phone, it uses Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and cellular connectivity for different use cases. Now, for example, a small earbud for your ear will connect via Bluetooth, which is low power, whereas streaming a movie is likely to be done over Wi-Fi with high bandwidth. It's not that these technologies are better or worse than each other, it's that they're optimized for different jobs. Now, the same applies for IoT network options. There are just different horses for courses, so don't get too caught up overthinking this space. Secondly, we're not talking about phone calls, video, and high bandwidth internet here. That's a different thing altogether. IoT networks are designed to just carry small amounts of sensor data. If you're after high-speed internet at the home said, we recommend checking something out like Starlink, and if you're after great connectivity around your farm, definitely check out Zetify. Third and finally, if you're feeling confused, don't stress, let us just help you navigate this. At Insight, our products work with all of these technologies so we just care about getting you set up with the right strategy for your success. How, you might ask? Well, by clicking the IoT Network Checker link below in the description and following the prompts, we'll take your address or DPIoT, model your terrain, check the coverage maps, and evaluate what is likely to work best for you. Now, we can also help by sending out test devices to check on-ground reality. The process is a standard part of our smart farm design process. Okay, so now that you've got a baseline understanding of the network options mentioned so far, it's important to understand the value of these and more specifically, where in fact you fit in. But we tend to work with three different types of producers or personas in the ag tech IoT space. Each of these personas have different goals. And during the smart farm planning process, we seek to identify where you sit on this spectrum and design a solution around those goals. So the first one is the explorer. 
So if you're an explorer, you're likely to be focused on a few specific sensors to solve key pain points or drive better decision-making process. So for those with livestock, this is often tank monitoring, and for those in cropping, it's likely to be soil moisture probes and of course, weather stations. Now, explorers typically think in terms of adding a few key sensors to their operation to dip their toe in the water before progressing to a smart farm deployment. Which brings me on to my next one, the smart farmer. So the smart farmer is a persona, typically a producer who has started with a few sensors, sees the value and is then keen to go to the next level of performance. So they recognize on-farm sensors as a new type of farm infrastructure like fences or silos, and they're often feeling the frustration of not being able to check or control everything that matters to them on their farm from their phone or tablet. Now, instead of thinking in terms of individual sensors, these guys are thinking in terms of entire aspects of their property. For example, they typically move from thinking about just monitoring a tank to a more advanced water management and control system. Now, lastly, let's talk about the pioneer. So the pioneer are the guys who are typically at the very forefront of technology and go the whole hog towards a fully featured smart farm. So pioneers think in terms of gaps. They're focused on closing the remaining sensor gaps in their property to ensure they have full 24 seven visibility to everything that goes on in their operation. Now, when you think about connectivity options, it's good to consider which of these personas resonates most with you. Now, with all that said, and in our opinion, there's really no question that deploying your own on-farm network will result in superior performance across all relevant factors. You'll have the right infrastructure to support a fully featured smart farm with strong signal strength and total control to solve coverage gaps, access to low latency and high reporting rates, the bandwidth you need to support the full range of sensor types, reliable downlink capability to control and automate aspects of the operation, and of course, maximum power efficiency to achieve an ultra long battery life. If you're interested in exploring this as an option, there are two main approaches you can take. The first being hosting an on-farm LoRaWAN gateway from a third party telecommunications operator or deploying your own on-farm IoT base station. If you host an on-farm LoRaWAN third party gateway, you're likely to be contractually bound to open this up for others to use and you may not own the gateway itself. This is a great thing to help your local community as you're extending the coverage of LoRaWAN access within your area. But just be sure to check your obligations and pricing. Often there are long contract terms to consider. The other option mentioned is to deploy your own on-farm IoT base station. These are often available as both an outright purchase or a subscription-based model and are able to be configured as a closed network so only you can access, as selectively open where you can share with a few selected neighbors and a fully open, which is anyone within the range can access it. So the main advantage of these are they can unlock performance beyond what is possible with LoRaWAN at a much lower deployment and running cost. Which brings me to the Insight base station. So if you're interested in deploying your own on-farm IoT network, you should definitely be checking out the Insight base station. So we have taken some of the best attributes of LoRaWAN, LTEM, and NB-IoT and combined them into one on-farm solution. The inside base station is optimized for powering smart farms and supports two and a half to five times power efficiency over typical LoRaWAN and NB-IoT installations, extending sensor battery life. It's got sub 30 second latency, high reporting frequencies, and a two to five times bandwidth advantage over pure LoRaWAN. And additionally, downlink capability to support control applications. The Insight Base Station puts you in complete control of your on-farm IoT network coverage with a best of breed technology approach at a fraction of the cost of other solutions and you can be set up in five minutes. It's truly plug and play. I hope you found this video helpful. At Insight, our products make use of all these technologies and we're just keen to help you navigate this somewhat confusing landscape. Please feel free to reach out to us by clicking the link below to get your free IoT coverage check for your property and we can help you consider what might work best for you. At Insight, we've got you covered.